Hey, what's up guys? Ricky in the Flip Lab. Today we're gonna go over when you're negotiating with a seller, you're trying to figure out what is the most I could pay for this house? That's what we're gonna go over today. A simple formula that our team uses, how we've bought in all of our flips, that literally a first grader could be doing this math to figuring out what our offers need to be at. So stay tuned to the whiteboard. I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. So guys, before we jump into the numbers on the whiteboard, I do wanna make this point that depending what market you're in, it's gonna completely change things like how to comp properties, how to calculate rehab costs, how to calculate your soft costs. Because in a state like New Jersey, where property tax is very expensive, it's gonna change the numbers compared to a state like Arizona, where property tax is cheap when you're looking at holding costs. Or things even like realtor fees in one state might be higher than in another state when it comes to what an average realtor is looking to make commission wise. Even things like profit of a flipper. A flipper in Phoenix wants to make $25,000 on a $300,000 project. In New Jersey, a flipper wants to make at least $40,000. So this is one of the biggest mistakes I see that wholesalers make and, and even new investors sometimes that are looking to buy their first fix and flip is they're using these internet numbers as if this is exactly what's gonna work in their market. Now this formula is gonna work in every single market, but you have to talk to realtors, contractors, active flippers in your area to figure out what things cost. How much does a rehab cost in this state and city? How much does a new roof in Phoenix, Arizona cost compared to in New Jersey? Because in Phoenix, the common roof is tile. In New Jersey, it's shingles. So that cost alone is gonna be very different. New Jersey has a lot of basements. A place like Arizona, very few basements. That's gonna affect the rehab costs as well. So you need to be considering all these aspects before you start doing your math. Is talk to experienced people in your area that have done a lot of projects, that know what they're talking about to get what their average rehab cost is. It could even be as simple as if someone was in New Jersey and asked, hey Ricky, on a, on a house like this, and they sent me a deal of a 250 to 300 ARV type house that we're usually buying, how much would this cost for you to fix it? I would say, you know, about 50,000. And then if they got that same answer from a few flippers, now they know that's about how much a normal rehab costs in New Jersey. So make sure that you're talking to people in your area, getting your numbers in your city down packed so you're not buying bad deals. Yeah. Truest product of my environment. Bounce back something like Jordan out of retirement. Everything gravy and all according to plan. Drop the ball, make room to fit the word in my hands. Pride aside, I can't move far to go back. What I'm after can't be bought with a duffel of cash. Took a lot of strength to lift what I got in my bag. Wouldn't take a thing at all to make up what I lack. Not to say I got it all, but I do got it like that. Built an empire. All right, guys. So before you start making offers, you have to get your numbers down packed. What I mean by that is figuring out the ARV, the MAO, and everything in between. I'm going to go over exactly how to calculate those numbers. So the first thing you're gonna have to figure out is the after repair value, ARV. Once you fix that property up, what are you gonna be able to sell it for on the market? So get really good at comping properties. I'm gonna make a whole entire video on how to properly comp. But once you figure that out, for this example, we said 300. Once we make this thing nice, we saw a bunch of other properties that were just selling that looked like flippers rehabbed them in the same neighborhood and they sold in a few days for 300,000. Also remember when you're calculating all these numbers, especially when you're first starting out, you're gonna wanna be conservative. So always, if, if there's three different comps and one's 310, one's 300 and one's 305, average it out and then even go a little bit more conservative. Because if you get good at buying deals off of conservative numbers when you're first starting out, when shit goes wrong, which it usually does, you know, rehabs cost more than you thought, shit takes longer, there's problems, maybe the house doesn't sell for as much as you thought, you wanna still be able to make money. So always be conservative when you're, when you're going through these numbers when you're first starting out. So next, you wanna figure out what the rehab cost is. What's it gonna cost to fix this entire project? Most of the houses we pick up, give or take $10,000, they're, they're costing about the same. We have to do all new flooring, paint, cabinets, redo bathrooms, buy fixtures. All these things roughly cost about the same. Now, sometimes there might be massive issues like a leaking underground oil tank, or maybe a tree fell through a roof and it's, it needs new structure and framing and things like that. Then that completely will change the rehab costs. But when you're first starting out, especially for a lot of you guys watching this videos, don't take on projects like that. Do the basic simple shit where you just gotta turn an old house into a nice new looking house. So in New Jersey, it's about $50,000 for us to rehab our houses. Next is soft costs. 
I can't tell you how many people just disregard soft cost in, in general and don't even factor these in. You have to be factoring these in. So what I mean by soft cost, commissions. When you go and sell the property on the market, you're probably gonna have to pay commissions. Now, Steve, my partner, he's a licensed realtor. So we saved some money listing our own properties, but we're still having to pay buyer's agents. Next are closing costs. When we buy the property the first time, we have to pay closing costs. And when we go and sell, we're also paying closing costs, tax. During our projects, which our typical project will take four or five months, we're having to pay property tax for all of those months. In a state like New Jersey, those where property tax is really high, those costs can add up quickly and can be pretty substantial. Utilities. So while we're rehabbing the house, we're having to pay for water, electric, things like that. Insurance. You have to get insurance on the property when you buy it. Inspections. So things like the CO inspection before you can sell the property, you're going to have to pay for those. And interest payments. Even though we're paying in cash, we're using private money loans or a hard money loan, and we're going to have to make interest payments on that. So make sure, depending on the loan that you have to fund the project, that you're calculating exactly what those are. So on average, our costs are, are about 25,000 in soft costs on a 300,000 type, type of house that we're rehabbing. So next, we're going to our profit. How much do we wanna make or how much, if you're wholesaling, how much does the flipper in that market wanna make? This is gonna vary depending where you're at. Like in Phoenix, 25,000 is an acceptable amount for a project like this. In New Jersey, where we're at, flippers are trying to make 40,000 on a house like this. So you wanna just calculate the minimum amount that you're trying to make. In 2021, we have been averaging on projects like this over 100,000 per deal. Not saying we wouldn't buy a deal and make 40 on it, but you wanna be calculating once again, the conservative number. So now all you have to do is you take the ARV and you subtract the rehab cost, the soft cost, the profit, and doing that, you're going to get down to 185 as your MAO, which MAO is maximum allowed offer. That is the absolute most when you're negotiating with the seller, what you can offer them. The goal is to also not make offers to the seller. Remember, you want to get the seller to their lowest price. And hopefully the number that they're giving you is a lot lower than that 185. But that way, you know, if the seller is talking, there's no possible way that I will sell for less than 200,000. It's probably time to put that in a follow-up and move on. So coming in with confident numbers is going to give you that confidence, not be using emotion. You're just using logic and having a firm number of, if they are a dollar past this number, we are not gonna buy this house. So go into negotiations with these firm numbers, have your MAO in mind, and buying houses becomes a lot easier where you could just focus on actually talking with the seller, figuring out the situation, trying to increase their motivation and why they should be selling to you to try to get them to their lowest number. So but one thing that won't change is the working backwards of getting the ARV, subtracting the rehab costs, subtracting the holding costs, and then getting to the profit amount and then figuring out, okay, this is what our maximum offer is. And like I said, if you're wholesaling deals, the only thing you need to add is to include your fee on top of what the flipper is trying to make as a profit. And that gets you to your MAO. Get good at calculating MAO and you're going to get more deals. All right, guys. So now that you know how to do the math and figuring out your maximum allowed offer, start talking to sellers. These deals aren't going to buy themselves. You still have to get out there and talk to as many sellers every day as possible. Use this simple formula to not overcomplicate yourself. Don't let, you know, the details of the, you know, at 12%, it doesn't work. It doesn't make the deal work or this or that, or trying to figure out every little bit of the rehab to make deals work. Let deals come to you. Let deals just obviously, when you, you look on the board, do this basic math that it makes sense. If you guys are getting a ton of value out of these videos, please hit that subscribe button. I just started this YouTube channel. We're going to be doing a lot more cool shit on here. We're going to be bringing on awesome guests for podcasts, more educational videos like this, and much more. So please, guys, follow me on Instagram also at realestatericky underscore from the Flip Lab. Thanks.